Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better hydration next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Black Manta, maybe the coolest looking villain in DC Comics. You know what? My video, my call. The coolest looking villain in DC Comics and one of the biggest badasses in the Seven Seas. He also falls into my favorite villain category. He doesn't want to rule the world, doesn't want to destroy the world, he just really wants the hero to die. Personal vendetta is the best motivation, and if you disagree with me, just know I'm gonna make an aquatic mech suit to get my revenge. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a face laser, something we can use to blast a beam across the map. Next, we need to swim and fly with plenty of mobility options to make ourselves happy. Or to make me happy. I like mobility options. Finally, we need a cool swimsuit, either the kind to kill the warrior king of Atlantis, or a two-piece, maybe both. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep a big red eye on your multi-classing minimums. Kick things off with intelligence. You can't throw submarines like your rival, but you still need to fight your rival, so just be smarter than it. Not that hard. They went full-on himbo curry in the DCEU. Dexterity next, maybe the best strategy to take down a guy with a big fork is to just shoot him from the other side of the map. Constitution after that, you need grit to get hit, and you're gonna get hit a lot. Follow that up with wisdom, tracking down people is hard. It's even harder when they live in a secret underwater society. You can't follow footprints underwater. Strength is a bit low. You're in good shape, but you're never gonna be as strong as that gosh darn fish man and we'll dump charisma. You're scary, but you're not good at talking to people. Black Manta is a human. You could make him an aquatic race, but the entire point of the character is that he's a land lover obsessed with Atlantic society. He's the Atlantean equivalent of a weeb. Being human will let you grab sharpshooter at level one, letting you fire at max range without disadvantage. You can ignore all but full cover, and you can take a negative five penalty to your attack roll with a ranged weapon to add 10 to the damage. Before you can make yourself the really fancy stuff, maybe just use a gun. Bump your constitution and your intelligence with your two free points, take survival for your skill of choice, and build your own background for intimidation and arcana proficiency. We could have made him a soldier, but I know you're all sick of that. Call this the Siabu background. Credit to Robin at Scooter Socks on Twitter for that joke, go follow her, very funny. We'll kick things off as a rogue for a bunch of skills because if you don't have Atlantean strength, you need some better skills. Athletics, sleight of hand, stealth, and perception are all regularly useful to track people down and murder them. You also get expertise in two skills of your choice, doubling your proficiency bonus with them. Instead of maxing out the stuff you're good at, we'll use it for athletics and intimidation to round up the stuff you're bad at because you shouldn't be bad at those things. You also get sneak attack, letting you add a d6 of extra damage to one attack per round as long as you have advantage on the attack or another member of the Injustice League within five feet of the target. Oh, and you have to be using a finesse or a ranged weapon. Thankfully, you shoot lasers, guns, and use knives. But wait, lasers aren't ranged weapons. They're a spell attack. Unless we dip over to Artificer. First level Artificers get to be magical tinkerers, adding a tiny magical effect to a tiny non-magical item. You make it light up, puff up some smoke or smell, or just send a message of 25 words or less. Let's see. Arthur Curry, you are a worthless turd. The next time I see you, I'm going to use a serrated knife to cut off your... Ah, oh, shoot, I ran out of words. I'll have to edit that. You get two cantrips, thorn whip, is a great grappling hook, dealing 1d6 piercing damage with a melee spell attack and pulling a creature up to 10 feet closer to you. Despite being a melee attack, it has a 30 foot range if you want to reel someone in, hook, line, and sinker. Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 1d8 lightning damage on a hit and prevents the target from taking reactions, so it's a very solid disengagement option if you need it. For your first level spells, Feather Fall prevents up to 5 falling creatures from taking falling damage, so Lex Luthor, Cheetah, Clayface, Toilinator, and Sticky Beard will all land safely thanks to you. Long Strider increases a creature's movement speed by 10 feet per an hour, and that's not specifically walking speed. It can be a swimming speed or flying speed as well. More on that later. Second level artificers get infusions, special toys that will make you cooler than ocean boys. Cap of water breathing lets you breathe underwater, which is pretty important if you want to commit aquatic regicide. Enhanced weapon adds one to the attack and damage rolls of a weapon. Any weapon you'd like, you might need a sharp knife to fillet a fish. Repeating shot adds one to your attack and damage rolls and lets you fire a weapon that normally requires reloading twice in the same round. You also never need ammo for it. That can save you money for more armor upgrades. Finally, enhanced defense adds one to the AC of a set of armor or a shield if you want to buy some armor upgrades with the gold you're saving on ammo. Third level artificers can choose a specialty. Armorers have the fanciest armor, and fancy armor is really the only thing you have going for you in this fight. Thankfully, that's quite a lot. You get heavy armor proficiency and arcane armor, meaning you can ignore strength requirements, you can use the armor as a spell casting focus, and nobody can take the armor off without your permission. You get to choose one of two models, either a guardian or an infiltrator set. Infiltrator is the way to go for you. Let's use a lightning launcher. That's a simple ranged weapon. You can use your intelligence 
4 with 90 feet of standard range and 300 feet of long range. So for you with the sharp shooter feet, 300 feet of standard range. It also deals 1d6 lightning damage and you can add an extra d6 of lightning damage to it once per round. Now were you paying attention? Did you catch the really fun part about this? It's not a spell attack, it's a weapon attack, a ranged weapon attack. That means lightning damage sneak attack is a go. Normally sneak attack is supposed to be crafty, tactical advantage, but for you it's just an extra big laser face. This is one of my favorite mechanical things I've discovered in months and it makes this build extra tasty. You can also move five feet faster in the infiltrator suit and you have advantage on stealth checks or if you're using the really heavy stuff, neutral stealth checks. So let's just go over what you got here. I know we have the pros section. We're going to do a quick mini pros section for third level artificer here. You get stealth friendly plate mail proficiency, a ranged weapon that deals 2d6 per shot of lightning damage and extra movement speed. You're almost ready to tackle the guy in gold. We're going to keep going to make sure we're really frying the fish. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement, bump your intelligence modifier for a better face laser, grappling hook, and taser. Jeepers creepers, you really are a walking armory, aren't you? Fifth level armorers get an extra attack, letting make two attacks instead of one with your action. Keep in mind, the extra d6 lightning launcher gets, and the extra d6 of sneak attack can only pop once per turn. But you can use sharpshooter every time you shoot. Oh, and you can use sharpshooter with the lightning too. That's super effective against water type Pokemon. I mean, uh, superheroes. You also get second level spells. Dark vision gives a creature eight hours of dark vision, no concentration required. We could take an infusion for that, but our spell slots are really just for buffs anyway. Speaking of, magic weapon makes a weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances and adds one to the attack and damage rolls with it. Your lightning launcher is probably the best option, but maybe you want a magic dagger. This will help you play with that. Maybe also grab shatter. It's free anyway, and it forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Never hesitate to drop a little seismic charge into the ocean. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, which is expertise for tools. Tool proficiencies specifically, not tools like Arthur Curry. You get thieves, tinkerers, and smiths, so that should help you cook up some new infusions, like Cloak of the Manta Ray, which not only gives you water breathing, but also gives you a 60 foot swimming speed. It's also a manta ray. That's as in character as it gets, baby. Spell refueling ring lets you recover a spell slot of third level or lower once per day, so I'd basically call it an extra third level slot. When you get third level slots, that is, right now it's an extra second level slot or another seismic charge with shatter. Seventh level artificers get flash of genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to the saving throw or ability check of a creature within 30 feet of you as an action, and you can be that creature because you're within 30 feet of yourself at all times. You can use an amount of these per long rest equal to your intelligence modifier. Don't waste them, but also don't forget to use them. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement. Cap off your intelligence modifier for the biggest dang laser your face can fire. Well, at least for now. Ninth level armorers get armor modification, meaning your armor is now four separate pieces, a helmet, a chest piece, boots, and a weapon. And you can use a separate infusion for each. You can also infuse two extra items per day as long as they're attached to the armor. That's really good. It will be even better later. For now, enjoy third level spells like haste, adding two to your AC, doubling your movement speed, giving you advantage on dexterity saves, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make one more attack with your action. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration. After that, you need to take a turn off of actions and reactions while you recharge. You can also shoot a regular lightning bolt with the spell lightning bolt, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 100 foot line, dealing 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail. That averages out to 24 damage, which is probably less than your lightning launcher if you're using sharp shots, but if you can get a couple of Atlanteans lined up, this could be a good way to spread the love around. Love is code for electrocution. Tenth level artificers are magical item adepts, letting you tune up to four items at the same time, and you can grab two more great options. Gauntlets of Ogre Power make your strength 19, so you can lift things like your rival. Oh my god, that's like four ability score improvements in one level, good lord. Winged Boots give you a flying speed equal to your normal speed for a minute at a time for a total of four hours per day. If you're just activating this in combat, you are not going to spend four hours on it in a day. You will not spend 10 minutes on it in a day. You will always be able to recharge two hours of flight with 12 hours of not flight is just here to say you can't fly over the whole ocean and that's fine you just want to fly to one part of the ocean anyway with this you now have a flying speed a swimming speed and a running speed with haste and long strider up it goes to 90 feet in the air or the ground and 140 feet in the water since the infiltrator boots specifically boost your walking speed and your swimming speed comes from the manta ray oh and your bonuses from enhanced weapon are now plus two so your laser is even more accurate i'm calling it you're officially better than aquaman but we can get even more better than aquaman if we continue let's continue 11th level artificers get spell storing item letting you store a spell of second level or lower in an object then cast that spell through that object an amount of times equal to double your intelligence modifier actually another ally can use it with your intelligence modifier too so even king shark could drop a depth charge 12th level artificers get another ability score improvement bump your dexterity modifier up in case you have to use guns that aren't giant lasers it sounds kind of boring but hey you don't have much more
more you need to invest in at this point. We're going to bounce back over to Rogue now because I want to turn your Lightning Launcher damage up to absurd levels. Second level Rogues get Cunning Action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide his opponent's action. That's 560 feet of swimming speed per round after Long Strider haste dashing, double dashing with Cunning Action, and triple dashing with haste. That's over 60 miles per hour. You can only clear 360 feet flying or running though. A pathetic 40 miles per hour. You wouldn't even get a ticket going that fast in a residential zone. Third level Rogues can choose a Roguish archetype, and Assassins will excel at pumping damage up thanks to Assassinate. This gives you advantage on attacks against creatures who haven't acted in initiative yet, and you automatically critically hit any creature that's surprised, doubling your 2d6 sneak attack damage. Oh, since it's probably your first attack with the laser in combat, double the 2d6 damage from the lightning launcher too for 8d6 plus 17 lightning damage with a sharp shot. Super effective critical hit, not even my low tick could handle that. You also get disguise kits and poisoner's kits. Maybe you'll poison someone, but I gotta be real, subtlety doesn't seem like your thing. You dress like a Power Rangers villain who turned on big head mode. Finally, you get steady aim, so you can give yourself advantage on an attack roll as long as you don't move in the same turn. If you have the option, just hover out of range with your flying speed and enjoy some guaranteed sneak attack damage. 300 feet of range should make you pretty flexible. Fourth level rogues get another ability score improvement to feet. What the heck? Let's just grab the tough feet. Those D8 hit die aren't doing it for me. Tough feet gives you 2 HP for every level you have, 2 HP for every level you're gonna get. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce incoming damage by half as a reaction as long as you can see the source of damage. That's assuming they can break through your 20 base AC when you have haste up on plate armor. Oh no, they did? Hopefully you'll be okay with your dump truck's worth of HP from tough. Then you can hit them with 3d6 sneak attack damage to make up for it. Six level rogues get another round of expertise. At this point, we just need to find that dang aqua lad. So grab Arcana and Survival to know about Atlantean magic and how to track it down. Seven level rogues get evasion, letting you dig half damage on failed dexterity saves and no damage on successful ones. You can add your intelligence modifier to your deck saves with Flash of Genius five times per day for a plus 14 modifier. There's so much synergy in this build with armorer and rogue. Holy God, I love it. 4d6 sneak attack damage also works pretty great. Since I'd want to steal the archery fighting style with fighting initiate at the 8th level of rogue, there's no reason to take the 8th level of rogue. So we're capping this off with the first level of fighter to roll a d10 for your hit die instead of a d8, and you can grab the archery fighting style to add 2 to your attack rolls with ranged weapons. Pairing that with enhanced weapon, your sharpshooter attacks still get to be a plus 10 bonus. So no missing, only death. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, but you could have scooped up cure wounds from the artificer list if you wanted regeneration. Actually, there's no reason not to do that. Go back and do that. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, the face laser. It hurts. With sneak attack, enhanced weapon, and two sharp shots per round, you'll be pumping out 76 plus 34 lightning damage per round. The face laser also has 300 feet of range, and you have a flying speed to hover out of danger. Go ahead and put up mobility options. That's because you have mobility options. Let's point out that you have 360 feet of movement speed on land or in the sky, and 540 in the water. Finally, you're hard to hurt with 20 AC when you have haste up, uncanny dodge, evasion, and well over 150 HP to start from. And we just scooped up some regen at the end because we can. For weaknesses, your charisma's pretty low. That can be hard. If I'm being honest, that's it. I think I've made it pretty clear. This is really solid. I guess if things resist lightning damage, that could be an issue. Still have guns though. 19 strength for a sword. I shouldn't have committed to three per build. Anti-magic field? Someone casts anti-magic field and breaks your infusions? That would be bad. But that's it. Considering I gave Aquaman nine levels of ranger, you're gonna wipe the floor with him. The ocean floor. Fly, swim, shoot, stab, do anything you want, because that's what this build is good at. Just don't step to a popular king if you can't finish the job. Otherwise, you could find yourself dealing with an entire Atlantean army. Oh, that could be a weakness. If you have to fight an entire army by yourself, still doesn't feel that weak. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more. And sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.